is story part two. Bucking Bronco. I was lonely and miserable, Scarlowy continued, till at last the manager came. I hope now that you're a better engine. Yes, sir, please, sir. Because I've asked Mr. Bobby to come and look after you. Mr. Bobby had helped to build me in England. I liked him, and we so, so we soon had to steam up. Come on, Scarlow, he said. We must help the workmen finish the line before the inspector comes. I didn't mind pulling trucks with Mr. Bobby, and we worked so hard that by the time Reneus arrived, the line was ready. Reneus never got so excited and bouncy as I did. He worked without hurry or fuss. Trucks often played tricks on me to make me cross, but they soon found out that teasing Reneus was a mistake. He was shunting one day when I came alongside. I was excited. I'm pulling the director's train, I said, and taking the inspector tomorrow. Think of that. Reneus pondered. You mind your bucks and bounces then, Scarlowy, he said at last. The drivers won't like them. Pooh, I snorted and bounced away to find the coaches. Peep, peep, I whistled. Hello, girls. Who is it? Agnes's deep voice echoed from the back of the shed. It's an engine whispered Beatrice, the guard's fan. He's come to take us out. Beware of strange engines, warned Agnes. We must be on our guard. Our guard has just come, giggled Beatrice. Jemima and Ruth, the other coaches, sighed with relief. I pulled them all happily to the station, but Agnes, still suspicious, kept muttering, be on your guard, be on your guard. But I was too excited to listen. It might have been better if I had. I was sizzling with excitement as I ran round and back down on Agnes. It's fun, it's fun, I chuckled. You may look harmless, she whispered, but we'll watch you, we'll watch you. She took me quite aback, but even Agnes couldn't complain about our upward journey. We stopped at every station and the directors got out to admire the arrangements. Everything went well and I forgot about Agnes and the manager, smiling, joined us on the footplate for the journey home. It looks so easy, Mr. Bobby, he said as we, as we rolled gently down. Can I drive him, please? We were running nicely. First rate, first rate, I hissed happily, gaining speed and all unknowingly. I began to bounce. The manager, alarmed, closed my regulator too quickly and too much. And Agnes's buffers clashed. He's playing tricks. Bump him, girls, bump him. They surged against me, urging me on. I bounced and lurched. I couldn't help it. The manager lost his footing, grabbed Wiley for a handhold, and disappeared. Peep, peep, peep! Brakes, guard, please! Mr. Bobby seized my controls, stopped the train, and looked back. Two legs waved Wiley from a bush. Oh dear. I think we know what happened, don't we? The manager was unhurt, but very cross. I'll not ride that bucking bronco again, he said. He sat in Beatrice for the rest of the journey. And the directors complained they'd been badly shaken. They said it was my fault. Renes will take the inspector tomorrow, they ordered. And you will stay out of sight in the shed. But late that evening, the manager came. I'm sorry, sir. I did try to be good, said Scullery. It wasn't your fault, said Scullery. It wasn't your fault, Scullery. I'm sorry I was cross. But we must do what the directors say now, but I'll make it up to you later. And the inspector was pleased with Reneus. You've done very well, he said kindly for a new engine. And he told the directors about some improvements which were needed. But, he went on, on the whole, your arrangements are good. He came to see me, and the directors told him what they thought had happened. I think, gentlemen, he said, that you are mistaken. Scarlowy should prove to be a useful engine, but he needs another pair of wheels. Take my advice and have them fitted, then you'll see the difference. Good day. <laughs>